Hello YouTube. Uh, back today with another video. Uh, today we're specifically working on a 48RE overdrive unit. This, the concepts in this video will apply to all the overdrive models made by Mopar, which includes your Dodge and Jeep trucks, your 42RE, 44RE, 46RE, 47RE, and 48RE, obviously. Uh, also known as A500, A518 models. Now this is the end clutch or overdrive brake friction face that we're looking at. This is the side of the overdrive housing that bolts to the transmission. I'm going to move this new housing out of the way. And all we're doing first, and you can see there's fractures in this, this one's pretty rough, but all we're doing first is we're going to pop this little round lock ring out. I'm going to pull the overdrive brake steel plates and the old clutch material out. Looks look great so far. Now here we're at what we're looking at here. Let me make sure we're in frame. Okay, here's your overdrive direct clutch hub, which housed the overdrive brake friction plates and steels. The clutch teeth line up on the hub. Here's your overdrive sun gear. And then this is retained by a small lock ring here. And then you've got a, a snap ring recessed in here into the overdrive direct clutch drum. To do this step, we have to put it into a press. The spring captured inside of this direct clutch hub is approximately, and there's been plenty of different theories in this, but we've always called it in the industry a 600 pound spring. Some guys say 800, 850. It doesn't really matter. Do not try to disassemble beyond this step without what we call, what we call an H press. This spring has already taken a couple lives in our industry when they first started coming out and guys weren't familiar with them. So, okay, I'm going to jump to the next step and move over to the press here, and we'll show you where we're going. We're fixtured up here, and I'm just going to show you what we're using is a fabricated tool. We're seating this sprag brace or this lower part of the press down onto the direct clutch hub, leaving access, if you can see this in here, to the overdrive sun gear. Again, we got to pull that lock ring and we got to get the snap ring down inside so you wouldn't want a big bulky tool obstructing your access to those two retainers. So here we go. centered good there and you don't want to just reef it down you just want to ease it down and you're not going to let it bottom out you're taking it taking it far enough so you can back both snap rings off okay I've, I've approximately compressed it about three-eighths of an inch I'm taking a small pick and you can see here's the round lock ring, if you can see that there. That came off the overdrive sun gear. I'm going to set that to the side. And then now we're going to move on to the snap ring on the overdrive direct clutch drum. You can use a flat screwdriver. I like these little, little picks that I'm using here. There's all kinds of different, different tools, but you're just going to find an edge where the steel plate loves drop into the drum. And it's you, you can start at the end of the snap ring, and there she goes. And you see it just, all I did is popped an end of it out so it released. This is what we call the wavy snap ring. We do offer the updated one on our website. These are common to break and they'll actually shatter into four or five, six pieces. A lot of the time you'll find pieces of them in the bottom of your pan, on top of your valve body. Even though they're in the back of the tranny, they have a tendency to work their way forward. Okay, so we got that apart. Set the parts to the side here. So all we're going to do now is we're going to release the pressure very, very slowly. And I'm going to try to zoom in here so you can see how much upward that spring is actually going to rise. Here we go. And we're going to 
give us plenty of room to work. Okay. Gonna move our tool. And I want you want you to see the items as they come out here. Now when I lift the overdrive direct clutch hub, it's gonna pull all the overdrive direct frictions and steel plates out with it. Okay. There's our steel stack, pressure plate on top, and it tops out on the the backing plate down here on the bottom, if you can see that. This hub looks great, everything looks good as expected. Now, here's the reason we have to use an H press. If you can see that, let me just glance at the frame. That's a monster spring. If your overdrive unit is cooked, where it's almost welded together, the whole thing's smoked, this is a suggested replacement. Just spring material under hot, cold, hot, cold will have a tendency to weaken and wear out. I would say 80 to 90 percent of the time you can reuse your spring. So, okay. Other parts in here overdrive sun gear, thrust plate, and this is the thrust plate bearing. This assembly actually sits directly against the overdrive planetary, which I'm going to show you here. We do have the new thrust plates and bearings on the website, part number 12220. Those are replaced about 80% of the time because the plate itself under that high pressure will have a tendency to warp. Here's the overdrive planetary. This particular one, being as it's a 48RE, is what, what we call a six pinion planet. It's got six internal gears. Most of your 42RE, 44RE Jeeps will be four pinion. The smaller 5.2 liter Dodge, Durango, Dakotas, Rams will be four pinion, some will be five pinion, and then all your V10, diesel, and bigger V8 engines will be five pinion. Okay, setting everything to the side here. And that's where we're at so far. I'm gonna to try to tip this just so you can see what we're looking at. Bring it up to the camera. Now we're looking down into the bottom. That's the overdrive sprag the overdrive ring gear, and inside the sprag is the overdrive race. Sorry to keep bouncing around on you guys. Now, you've got two retainers in here. Snap ring. And a snap ring. Now, and I've already taken the liberty of removing the top inspection plate, which had two T25 Torx bolts, if I recall. And all we're going to do Sometimes you can use a needle nose or a regular pair of pliers. We're going to expand this. We're using a, a special snap ring plier. You can see that there. To expand the lock ring. Because I don't want my overdrive sprag to come apart. I'm going to try to extract it first. I could just release it all, let it fall out like we're tearing down a core. But then the rollers are going to end up on the bench in pieces and this is not a not a very inexpensive sprag, so I want to reuse this. Here is the double roller overdrive sprag assembly. It is directional, so I'm going to put it back on just how it came out. Keeping it on the overdrive sprag race. We're going to set this to the side so it doesn't get messed up. Okay, underneath, another roller bearing, or tape, uh, Torrington bearing goes on top of the snout of the overdrive sprag race. The output shaft is the outer sprag race for that twin roller sprag. Okay, so now we're back here. What we're gonna do is spread, spread that lock ring and everything fell right out. Okay, here's your roller bearing that we just released out of the housing. Here's your overdrive ring gear. These lugs here are your parking lugs. Here's your overdrive direct drum. And we're going to actually leave this entire assembly together. We are going to clean it up a little bit before she goes back together. So we're going to start reassembling. Keep in mind the sprags are a one-way roller clutch. So they are going to drop in and only go one direction as the spring's in a collapse. And we'll just seat down. sometimes give you a little bit of a 
bare, but not too bad. Okay, and that's seated all the way in there, if you can see that. Here's our overdrive planetary. I did inspect this. Ideal inspection is checking all the pinion gears for any rock, any hard-facing pitting. And you generally want to do that in a really good lighted situation. I actually walked it outside and looked at it under just normal sunlight, which is one of the, my favorite things to inspect parts under. Okay, so that's seated in, and all I did is line the teeth up with their overdrive ring gear, and then rotated it, as you saw, to get it to drop all the way down. And you can see it's, if you can see that, it flows nice and smooth. Okay, overdrive sun gear, thrust plate, and bearing. And there is a snap ring on here. If for some reason you had to change this thrust plate, you would need to remove that snap ring, insert the new one. Just remember, bearing face goes on the sun gear teeth side. And all we're doing is dropping this down. Lines up, like so. Okay, where we're at here, overdrive sun gear, overdrive spring. You just want to settle that into a nice spot. And here's our overdrive direct clutch hub. And then what I've already done is wiped all the steels down. I've taken my pre-soaked friction plates and I've restacked everything. Rotating one clutch plate, one steel plate, one clutch plate, one steel plate, etc. None of this stuff is overly complex. It's just a matter of taking your time and completing all the steps thoroughly. Making sure you don't miss anything. It's pretty straightforward just laying out all your parts as they come out. I'm going to pick up the overdrive clutch hub grabbing the inner splines and hold the outside with my thumbs and I'm just going to rest the entire thing over the top of the spring and the spring actually sits into it. Now the splines on the inside need to line up with the splines in the overdrive sun gear so I'm gently just rotating to find that sweet spot and there it dropped about a quarter of an inch down onto the splines. And what that does is as I'm going to compress it those splines are going to line up. Now I'm also going to be lining up. If you look on these steel plates here, they've all got lugs. All these lugs are going to line up to fit, if you can see this, I'm going to move in frame, to fit the lug grooves on the overdrive direct clutch housing or drum. I forgot to turn the camera back on for a couple steps, so I'm sorry about that guys. So to get the roller bearing in the back to seat in, you use the spreader and it'll drop on and then you'll see the groove on the bearing where it lines up. Uh, the one one trick is when we're repressing it down, where we're at right here, so I've got everything back in the housing, I'm just getting ready to set up the overdrive brake frictions. During the recompress, the stub shaft, is you can use an old 500, a lot of the tooling will come with it. We're actually going to offer these shafts on ours. What it is is an intermediate shaft that's been cut down. The overdrive inner sprag race and the output shaft have to be lined up together so we use a stub shaft to do so and it's what all the industry uses if those aren't lined up your your overdrive will not go all the way under the tranny so I'll be right back here so hope this might help somebody in understanding how these come apart and go back together it's, it's really just like anything take your time step by step and it's not too overwhelming in the next couple weeks I will try to post some links in the bottom of this video that will show you where we offer the new 48RE overdrive housing the rebuilt complete units as well as the tooling to compress some of these units so if you have any questions please direct them to the contact us page on our website and thanks very much for watching we appreciate your support